everyone i am very happy today for two special reasons number one the summer's back it feels so nice and second reason today is a very special day it's a birthday of a very special friend a star of the indian chess world but before i tell you about her yes it's a lady and before i tell you about her i'll tell you a small story so this was the year 2001 so i was already a very strong player at that time uh, and you know i was like the commonwealth women champion in the year 2000 and i was also the national junior champion in the year 2000 so i was in the top you know at the top of uh, indian women chess and there came a girl i was playing the nationals there came a 10 and a half year old girl and she smashed me in the nationals smashed not defeated so i had made couple of weak moves i had weakened my king i don't know whether i uh, you know underestimated her i don't completely remember my mindset but i was completely smashed by a 10 and a half year old girl and uh, i think she was unrated at that time because in my records i have put her as unrated and um, she was a girl with uh, i don't think it was even boy cut hair it was like a tiny 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 hair i think it was that i'm not sure it was boy cut or that you know that was i remember vaguely remember that was a time she had tiny tiny hair and uh, she just when i mean i was just uh, smashed by her i would say i repeat that and that girl i'll tell you later who she is so i'll first tell her tell you all about her achievements so she and i we played the our first chess olympiad together and that was in the year 2004 we made a debut in the chess olympiad in calvia in spain and uh, since 2004 she has been in the indian team i mean till today till today since 2004 in fact i often met her we were part of the same team from 2004 to 2010 after that she became very very strong and um, she became a men grandmaster the second player the second player in you know indian women history to become a proper men grandmaster she's won the world junior she has uh, you know i mean i find it very difficult to tell you everything i mean about her achievements it's been huge so she's won the indian national women she has won the asian women she has won the commonwealth among the awards she has won the arjuna award and the padma shri in the year 2019 Uh, what else am i missing she won the bronze medal in the women world championship three times did you all guess who she is she is dronavali harika our grandmaster our friend our star so you know there is this girl whom i have seen since she had this tiny tiny hair you know very small one boy cut smaller than boy cut hair and now we know her as uh, a very beautiful girl a very successful girl our star player and you know when i say beautiful i just don't mean beautiful you know beautiful looking but i mean someone who is very nice whom you you feel comfortable speaking to someone who is down to earth i mean i have really really met a lot of people a lot of successful people but i really care and like and admire the ones who are down to earth and harika is one such person i know of in fact in the year 2018 she got married and what she did was amazing she invited everyone literally everyone who has ever helped her in her life in any way So it was a beautiful gathering of chess players from all across the world and i think this was truly amazing that she did not forget anyone's contribution to her life you know i've seen 
so many people who become stars overnight and they don't remember the friends or the people who helped them but harika is not one of them and that is why she is very very special it's her birthday today let's all wish her a very happy birthday and lots of happiness in her life she truly deserves that very beautiful career victory by harika but before that let me give you a brief about the player harika and about her playing style that i know of so harika is a very very hard working player and she can work to any limit to you know achieve her targets so she is a goal setter and she is a goal getter as in she sets a goal and she works extremely hard to get what she wants you know and um, one very important thing about her chess quality very very unique thing about her is that she can just play any kind of position she has a very good understanding of chess and a very special thing was she had an amazing bond with her coach rama raju so her coach knew exactly what kind of positions harika was comfortable with and harika just blindly believed her coach and she would just go and play whatever the coach would say like even if sometimes she would had a preparation of only 10 minutes or 15 minutes she would just go play out the position and on the board she would play as if she just knew everything so she had this unique ability and i'm saying had because i know harika very personally you know personally very well till 2010 now the style might have changed things might have changed but i am uh, telling about the style uh, which was there i don't think there is too much of a change although she might be working with different players but at that time uh, what i had noticed was that her coach would find some side variations uh, for her to play and she would just sit confidently as if she knew that position since years and in fact she would come back with a win from that you know opening so she has this amazing ability to be comfortable in any chess position which is very very unique and she is positionally amazingly sound and she does not make any weakness in her camp and if her opponent creates a weakness she exploits them very well so the next game which we are going to have a look at was played in gibraltar 2016 i was also playing that tournament and uh, white was nigel short the legend uh, we had an episode on him and this game by harika this victory by harika got her the best game prize in gibraltar and you know gibraltar is a very very prestigious tournament where the elite players of the world play and to get the best game award in that tournament is a really big big thing so let's get started with the game uh, nigel short started with e4 harika played e6 the french d4 d5 knight d2 and here normally harika used to play at that time knight f6 but i guess for the special uh, you know game against nigel she had prepared bishop e7 she had played this once when she was like you know very very young but after that she shifted to knight f6 but in this game she shifted back to bishop e7 e5 c5 queen g4 so white is attacking the pawn on g7 black played k4 
king effort defended it and this is uh, you know this might sound a little bit unusual to you but for a french player this way of defending the g7 pawn is not unusual d into c5 was played and uh, here uh, harika played something which is um, a little not so i would say it, it, it was not so common at that time and i think even today uh, knight c6 is more usual in this position but she played h5 and she attacked the queen so i guess she must have prepared some side variation and here nigel played queen to e2 but uh, the difficult thing about this move is that the queen blocks the bishop's diagonal and um, this is a little bit odd to play in one's game and uh, after queen e2 harika took bishop into c5 Nigel played knight b3 attacked the bishop and Harika went b6 in this position i think this was an important position in the game so here white played knight h3 and i'm not sure about this move <coughs> i mean i guess white wants to play <coughs> queen f3 and knight g5 but uh, i'm not sure developing the knight on the edge of the board as they say knight on the rim is dim so till it can be rerouted i i'm not very sure about this move i think uh, maybe it was not the best move here in this position very interesting instead of knight h3 was to go queen d1 and the idea was that now white could play the natural moves knight to f3 bishop to d3 okay it feels odd once you go queen g4 then you go queen e2 then you go queen d1 but uh, i guess this was uh, an interesting possibility but okay white played knight h3 here white had different plans and uh, black played queen to c7 and black is attacking the e5 pawn and there is this idea to play bishop a6 and win the e5 pawn so after queen c7 white had to defend e5 pawn white played bishop to f4 defending it knight e7 was played long castles knight g6 attacks the bishop put some pressure on the e5 pawn king b1 was played here and black played knight c6 and if you look at this black is developing all the pieces to the natural squares right now black is putting some pressure on the center pawn e5 and black st white still has um, the pieces a little bit um, uncomfortably placed and if you look at this black is ready to expand on the queen side but white is not ready yet to do anything on the king side and i think um, this is a very important factor in attack versus counter attack position it seems that black will just be playing natural moves to attack but for white it's not going to be easy so i think something has gone wrong or maybe everything has gone wrong for white you know it's his move number which one is it 12 yeah move number 12 but already looks like a very difficult position like for example let's go for a few more moves uh, rook e1 was played and a5 and now it's even more clear that black is ready to push on the queen side and all white is doing is defending the center pawn and still struggling with the development of the h1 rook bishop on f1 knight on h3 all these pieces are not um, in the best of their squares and uh, makes white very comfortable uh, uncomfortable in this position so here knight into c5 was played b into c5 and now black has a semi open b file to attack and the b2 pawn will be a target soon white played queen e3 so white wants to you know develop the bishop somehow clear the way for the bishop and white is attacking <coughs> c5 pawn so black played c4 and after c4 black is also threatening this push d4 maybe it's it's a possibility white played queen c5 check king g8 was played bishop c1 defends the pawn on b2 and here a4 and one of the threats black has in this position is maybe to play rook a5 put some pressure on this maybe e5 is a target maybe e5 can be captured after this so white had to support the e5 pawn white played f4 
and white may maybe white has my f5 at some point black did not give white any chance for that black played knight g e7 derouting the knight now there is no f5 of white and in fact it's black who's going to play knight f5 very soon and that will be a very good square for the black knight white played knight to g5 the knight is trying to come to the game but it's already too late let's see knight f5 was played rook d1 and um, if you look at it if you look at the game it's move number 20 now white has not made any concrete plan or white was not able to make any concrete plan white had to solve his own problems every move and um, here white has uh, you know uh, created a, a trap like set a trap for black and uh, the trap is that in this position if black goes rook b8 it's a baby trap but harika definitely did not fall for it i just show the trap if rook b8 this would be a mistake here because white can go bishop into c4 sacrificing the bishop and the point is after d to c4 queen into c6 this is the shot because there is this back rank weakness i have been covering this topic again and again uh, after queen e8 to e8 as a mate so this was a trap set by white but uh, of course uh, harika did not fall for it and harika played the move rook to a5 attacking the queen queen f2 was played rook b5 and uh, we see that uh, black has threats against b2 and black will be piling up against it soon so white played c3 uh, stopping black's uh, c3 in future taking control of d4 square pr probably and here black played queen a5 there is this threat to capture on c3 white played queen c2 defending c3 rook b8 was played king a1 bishop a6 and white also has to consider d4 of black maybe this is possible at some point of time i mean at least white has to consider this knight f3 was played controlling controlling d uh, d4 square and very interesting is that after 25 moves this is 25th move so white has finally um, brought his knight from g1 to h3 to g5 and you know to f3 it's been a long journey for the knight and um, yeah it's difficult for the side who has to you know make such moves it's always nice to be on the other side and to say that oh these moves were wrong but uh, white had to make difficult decisions at the start but uh, it proved very very uh, costly such you know a tempo in the opening so okay queen b5 was played g3 a3 b into a3 and here harika played a very nice move i really like the move she coolly played queen to a5 now what is queen a5 her idea is to go bishop to b5 and bishop to a4 she just vacated the b5 square for her bishop i really like this uh, idea bishop h3 was played and harika continued with her plan bishop b5 and now she's threatening to play bishop a4 and there's some big problem for it here and definitely black has a fantastic position as you can see and here nigel tried for something desperate he went rook into d5 so when we have a difficult position we uh, you know make difficult decisions uh, make some desperate attempts to change the course of the game but uh, harika had a very nice reply to this uh, she played a very nice move in this position if you want you can pause here and think i will show the game further and uh, first we need to understand what happens for ed5 what's the point of rook d5 so e into d5 is met with bishop into f5 that's the point white has and white will get some breathing, breathing space but uh, after rook into d5 harika did not capture the rook but instead she went bishop to a4 very nice move and the point is that if you take rook into a5 bishop into c2 is there with a with a threat of rook b1 and the a5 rook is hanging if you defend against the mate so after bishop a4 white played queen to d2 moved away the queen here came queen into d5 after queen into d5 this is my masala chai moment 
find the final move of the game after which Harika won. A beautiful finish to this game. Did you find the move which sealed the victory for black? Uh, first, uh, let's try to see what happens for ed5. So after ed5, bishop f5, black is better, but white is still in the game. White is not yet, uh, you know, lost. So after queen d5, Harika finished the game in one move by playing one good move, bishop c2. So she's threatening this mate in one and this queen is going next move but very importantly bishop c2 not only threatens this mate in one uh, but it also supports the f5 knight which is completely defended now leaving uh, you know lot of material for black and uh, i think this was a beautiful game a game where uh, it seemed that uh, things did not go uh, right for white and uh, Harika showed amazing confidence in herself. She played a very solid game and uh, she just kept her cool and uh, I think exploited uh, you know white's pieces, white's bad development, white's king side very beautifully. I really think this was uh, a great victory for Harika. Harika had a dream to become a men grandmaster. And this she did in a tournament in Hangzhou in China in the year 2011. She achieved her final Grandmaster now. I decided to show you all a game from the tournament, one of the very important games, one of the very important victories by her in that tournament, which gave her the final Grandmaster norm, which made her dream come true. So this was a game where Harika was white and a former world women champion, Zhu Chen, was black. Let's see what happened in the game. We'll go through it very fast. d4, d5, c4 was played by Harika, e6, knight c3, c6. And we see the triangle slav on the board. And here, Harika did not play the usual move she does. And she played something which is very theoretical. Now I have maintained this that Harika is a very, very hardworking player and she likes to surprise her opponent before the opponent can surprise her. And she is normally ready to work very hard for that. So she is very happy to give one surprise on each day before her opponent springs a surprise. And here she played the move E4, a move which she had uh, almost never played before and after d into e4 knight into e4 now this line is very very theoretical bishop b4 check was played bishop d2 d4 pawn is going so black took queen into d4 bishop into b4 queen into e4 check bishop e2 knight a6 all this has been known to theory that is why i'm not um, you know going into the detail right now Bishop a5. Now white is threatening a mate in one with queen d8 after bishop a5. Uh, here there are a couple of alternatives uh, black has. So black has moves like bishop d7 or maybe even f6 making way for the king. But uh, here b6 was played which is another move uh, possible here. Queen d6 was played and uh, the point is white is putting pressure on the c6 pawn. There is this threat to play f3 and if the queen moves queen into c6 with attack uh, to the rook and uh, check to the king is there. So black played bishop to d7. Black cannot take the bishop on a5. Bishop c3 was played attacking the pawn on g7. In this position, black played f6 defending the g7 pawn. Knight f3. So both the players were playing uh, very fast till now. And uh, you know, one thing I want to, you know, mention through this game is that uh, a lot of people who are not, uh, you know, professional players, who are beginners, who are, who have, you know, made the first moves in the game of chess, they 
think how much do they need to study opening theory do they need to study opening theory does everything just depend on theory now one thing i would like to tell to you know all of them that if you play a variation like this where both sides have the king in the center and this is very very concrete white has given a pawn if you see black has an extra pawn it's a gambit line and both the kings are in the center now these are the kind of positions where if you do not know theory you will land into trouble it's not easy to find out what to do as black especially because you know white queen is on d6 uh white king can castle very soon and put more pressure on the king so these are the kind of positions you have to know and the other way out is do not play such complicated lines you know follow the basic principles of game castle early bring your king to safety and then play something if you are new to the game i mean these are the positions which masters can play they have you know they study such positions they have knowledge they have some understanding and they can play but when we begin chess we should just play it simple keep things simple you don't have to study that much theory but follow the basic principles develop knight develop bishop go castling bring your rooks to center and play so here zhu chen the black player has played something very concrete and the problem is you forget something you you know one or two moves here and there you don't remember the move order and things become very very difficult so knight e7 was played in this position and uh, after long castles we see there is an attack to the bishop on d7 black took queen into e2 white took queen into d7 check king f7 white's king has castled it's no longer in the center but black scale king is still on f7 rook h e1 was played queen c4 so we see that white is two pawns down but white has some initiative and all white pieces are very very active so white played rook e3 and this position was known to harika so she had prepared and she knew that this line exists there is you know this two pawn sacrifice and things like that and she was playing very fast um i think i think she knew uh, what she was doing basically uh, maybe it was all her preparation till here rook h8 i have a you know feeling that this was definitely a preparation so rook h8 was played b3 and um, here black played queen g4 and very interesting is that in this position instead of queen g4 if black was queen f4 it's it's just bad for uh, black because after rook d4 attacking the queen queen h4 there is this move queen into e6 king f8 and rook h4 and the point is that uh, if the you know black plays knight c5 attacks the queen on e6 there is queen h3 and even the h7 pawn is uh, going after this so in this position after b3 black played queen g4 and white played h3 so till here i have showed the game fast because i wanted to come to this main uh, you know critical position of the game and here this is the moment so if you're black here you can you know uh think yeah if you're black what will you do in this position where will you move with your queen for example i'll give you two moves queen g6 and queen f4 which move will you choose this is an interesting position for decision making and as i keep telling decision making is uh very difficult in chess it seems um, you know we always think like why do strong players go wrong but when we are playing a game these small decisions are not at all easy to make so here zhu chen went wrong and uh, she played queen g6 she had to play the move queen f4 in this position and then the position is um, kind of unclear after this but uh, for example like rook d4 is possible a uh, queen moves queen into e6 king f8 and so on this is very very unclear maybe white is uh, white is having some advantage a lot of initiative the king is still on f8 but the game goes on but in the game after h3 black played the move queen g6 white played queen into e6 king f8 and this is 
an important position. My masala chai moment here. Can you find the last move in the game? It's simple but nice. Harika finished up the game with knight e5 and uh, she's threatening the queen and also a mate in one with knight d7. Her opponent resigned here because after f into e5, there is this move, rook f3 check, it's over for black. A nice victory, a wonderful victory for Harika and this is one of those, you know, games, one of those important games which gave her the final grandmaster norm, made her the second woman in India, from India, to become a men grandmaster. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Let's wish Harika a wonderful life ahead with lots of happiness and success. Before you all go, don't be a miser. Do give a thumbs up to this video if you liked it. Bye-bye. See you.